every artist that travels in an RV needs to have a studio space where they can be themselves, where they can create and play and work. Hi, it's Beverly Cole and I'm in my studio in my RV today. I want to talk to you today about setting up your own studio in your RV. I haven't seen anything like this um, discussed. I've seen people that turn their RV into a, not their RV, but an RV or a trailer into a studio. And that's great. But I want to talk today about an artist, we artists, us artists, (laughs) who travel in our RVs and wonder, you know, is it okay How's my family going to feel with me bringing stuff and doing my own thing? How are my friends going to feel? How's my family that I visit going to feel? Well, let's talk about that. And then I want to talk a little bit about my own experience to let you know that I, I understand. I understand this situation. So I have an RV studio and I've had an RV studio in every RV I've owned and I've owned three of them. And it's a different situation in each one. Now, I haven't had um, a studio in in an RV with a family, with children, but I do have my husband and I have my two cats. And believe it or not, my cats get jealous (laughs) when I don't spend enough time with them. But I also visit my family. And I I have four granddaughters that I visit. So I cherish that time with them. And I used to think that well, you know, I don't want to bother them. They have their lives, they have their friends, and I don't want to get underfoot and, you know, expect them to do things with me. But I've discovered that that's truly not the case. They need to have that time with me. They need to have the experience of being with their grandmother and learning from her and making memories because, let's face it, we aren't going to be here forever, right? So I need to do that with my grandchildren. So during all of this, I am in my RV with my husband and my cats. And I am going to talk about the changes that happen when you move from one to the next, or actually from when I move to one to the next, and especially about how to set one up for yourself. Now, it depends on how long your trip's going to be, Uh, to talk about how much stuff you want to bring. But we're not going to talk about how much stuff or what you're going to bring and put in your studio today. Today, we're just going to talk about the studio itself, the space, the time, because that's what it it means. It's the space and it's the time that you put into it. So let's talk first about the space. Now, the space... Is going to be one of two things, either flexible, which is the case with most things in an RV. I mean, it seems like in an RV, everything turns into something else. You know, the couch turns into a bed. The chairs can even turn into a bed. The booth can turn into a bed. It seems like everything turns into a bed so that you can have company and that you can carry all these people in your RV if you want to. Personally, I enjoy my space. And I do have my grandkids over, but I'm not so sure how much family from outside I'd want to, you know, include. Um, But that's a personal thing. If you have children, of course you're going to have them with you. If you know another couple that you want to take along in your RV, well, sure. There's going to always be a need for space. And that's why they make things in an RV so flexible. So you're either going to have a studio in a flexible space where you will need to have some handy storage where you can put your things away when the space is needed for something else. Or it could be a designated space where you have that space the entire trip, the entire time you're living in your RV. At this point, I'm lucky enough to have that. And yet I could put my things over in another space if we needed the table for something else but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Not this time. This time, it's mine. We eat outside. We eat in our chairs. We don't sit at the table. So it's been cleared away as a place of communal uh, eating or anything communal, and it's my personal art space. So two kinds. There's a flexible space or multi-purpose, and there's also a uh, designated space. 
Now you may ask why. Okay, so I'm an artist. Okay, but why do I have to have a studio? Well, this is the thing. Your life, according to Jamie Riddler, who is a certified art um coach, sorry, (laughs) I lost train of my thought there, I had to think, Um, sort of an art coach, and she's also the creative director of Jamie Riddler Studios. She's a sweet, fantastic, deep thinker. So you may want to look her up, Jamie Riddler. Wonderful, wonderful, inspirational person. And she says that your life is your studio. So your studio is built into your life. You just need somewhere to plant it. You have within you that desire to play, to work, to create, whatever you want to call it. That desire needs to have a place to spill out of you. Now, it can be a space, like I said, even that you take with you. Your your studio in your life can be packed away in a little kit. I have an art kit box, and we'll talk about that in another video, that you can take with you. Say you're off with sightseeing with the family. You're going to go to a, an amusement park. You're going to go to the beach. And it's a full day and you're busy and you're taking pictures and you're playing and laughing and eating with your kids and your husband or your friends or your partner or whoever you're with. And at the end of the day, everyone's exhausted and tired and there's nothing like a ride home to put a kid to sleep. You can pull out your little kit box for a few moments and reminisce, do some doodling, look at the pictures that you took and make some drawings. Even if it's only for 10, 15 minutes, that is your time for your studio to spill out and be used and recorded and made used to make memories and to grow. If you don't use your art Every day, you are not going to give yourself the opportunity to learn and grow. It has been recorded. It has been said so many times that I've read and seen in videos where they say an artist needs to do their work, their play every day. You may not feel like it every day, but you need to do the work. Things are not going to get better unless you practice, just like anything else. So on your trips in your RV, your special studio in your life, as your life, needs that space. You know, and it can be a big space, it could be a small space, it can spill out onto the picnic table, it can cross, it can cross someone else's path by including them in what you're doing, helping their curiosity to grow and their art to grow and be an inspiration. That's pretty much what a studio in an RV is. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to travel and share and learn and grow. So your studio If it's portable, if it is one that needs to be packed away, then you want to have it in containers that can be packed away in the cabinets. You will need some designated cabinet space. And I'm sure even in a small RV, you can find a spot where you can put a couple of boxes, a couple of cases, a couple of lunch boxes, a couple of shoe boxes, even one shoe box, where you have a few things that you can use to do art. If you have a designated space like I do, then you can add drawers to that space, you can add boxes, you can add bags, you can add baskets. As creative beings, you're gonna come up with ways to enjoy your space. Something else though, even if you have to pack everything away every time, You want to be able to leave a little bit of something out on a counter or tabletop or on a wall that inspires you. Keep things around you that inspire you, that make you feel like, oh, I just need to pull that stuff out as soon as the kids are in bed or, oh, they're going down to the playground. 
I'll just, I can stay down back here and I can work on something. Or, oh, I'll just bring this with me and sit on the bench at the playground and do this while they play and I can keep an eye on them. Or, oh, my husband's going to play golf, which is my case. Great, then I have some time to work. I always make sure that when my husband wants me to spend time with him, even if I'm in the middle of a project, that I say, okay, I'll be right there. Because family comes first, no matter what. Family is with us for a short time, and we need to enjoy them while we have them. So, and it's not fair to him. It's not fair to him if I ignore him. And, you know, I need to spend the time with him. But when he goes to do his thing, I can do my thing. It's as simple as that. So when you leave your sticks and bricks house, you pack things away to take with you. Then you set them up and you play or work whenever you have the chance. And like I said, you're not going to always feel like it. Sometimes you're going to feel like, oh, I'm so tired. You know what you can do then? You can pull out some paints and mix colors. You can sit in the chair while everyone's watching a movie and you can cut things out. It's always something to keep you going. And then let me tell you, that's when you will enjoy little bits and pieces. It's like a collage. You're going to have little bits and pieces along the way of things you've gotten done. And you put them in a kit box or you put them in, a, in, a, in envelopes and you save them for a time when you have more time to work on them. So many women I've met who are retired and they say, oh, I've always wanted to learn how to paint. Or I've always wanted to take a class in collage, but I never had a chance. Or I wish I'd learned how to draw. I can't draw a straight line. Here they are later in life, trying to roll back the camera to the early times to learn and time is running out. But if you do this a little bit all the time in your trips, in your little studio, your big studio, whatever it might be, trying different things, doing the things you love, you're going to feel more fulfilled as a person. You're going to feel more giving because you've had a chance to spend some time on yourself. And when you get older, you're going to have it all in your back pocket and ready to pull out and grow and and take what you built up in your envelopes, in your journal, in your camera, in that shoebox, in that space under the bed. You're going to pull all those things out and have them to share not only with your teachers in your classes who will want to teach where you're going to learn more, but also to take those things out and share them with your grandchildren, share them with your children, your friends, and help them to grow. So as an artist, the biggest thing I can say about having a studio in your RV is that you can't afford not to have a studio in your RV You can't help but have a studio in your RV because your life is your studio, like Jamie Riddler says. Your life is. And everything that you do blooms and grows out all of the seams of that life that you're living. And it's going to make you a better friend, a better mom, a better wife, a better grandmother, a better student when you go to learn more. It's very frustrating for people when they don't know anything to try to create. So if you have all those things in your back pocket, you're going to enjoy those classes a whole lot more. You may even find yourself teaching those classes. At this point, I want to just say thank you for being here and supporting my channel. I am trying to grow to my first thousand people so that I can continue to make these videos. So please comment, 
and subscribe and hit the bell. The bell means that every time I put up a new video, I don't have to go on Facebook and say my new video is up, but the people that follow me will know because that's pretty much what I've been trying to do. Get people to know that they're here. Uh, my videos are here and you can watch them. I try to put the word out myself, but if you hit that bell, you're automatically going to know and it's going to be so much better for you and for me because I want to be able to learn from you as well. So if you know anything about RV art, please share. And thank you so much for that. Here is the finished collage pages that I was working on. And I hope you enjoy them. I have them out here in my outdoor studio at my RV. Two pages in my journey journal. It's been great. Thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you next time. Bye.